she was just flirting with me in the DMs okay. and asking. Oh, <laughs> Whatever. It's at all times, preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. So let me ask you this. Yes. Would you marry down? <laughs> <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. I hope your Tuesday is going amazing. If you didn't know, I drop these every single Tuesday. We are now in season four. We just launched our first opening episode last week. So make sure you guys check that out where I talked all about goals and goal settings and how to basically achieve your goals. And then I just kind of reviewed my last year of went went wrong and why I didn't achieve some of my goals. If you guys are watching the YouTube video, you'll see we do have a new background. I'm really excited. I've been praying for a background and I got it. So I put some, some hard work into this and we got it. So I hope you guys are loving the new background. If you don't see it, check out the YouTube channel or Spotify. And yeah, I am really excited for the first guest to come on to Happy and Healthy. The structure that we basically have it as is there's two guests per month as well as two solo episodes. So there will be another solo episode again next week. Um, some of the feedback that you guys gave us was that you actually preferred solo episodes, which is really just humbling to me. Thank you guys so much. I'm glad that you guys want to hear what I think and my thoughts and stuff like that. So definitely we'll try to continue to do those and create episodes regarding topics that you guys specifically send me. So always send us suggestions on the Happy and Healthy podcast Instagram. For today's episode, I am so, so excited because I am interviewing Jess and Gabe Conti. They are longtime YouTubers, friends of mine that I've known when I used to live out in LA and just a powerful, beautiful, godly couple. Um, it was so cool getting to interview them, hearing about both their books. They're both YouTubers and authors, their new baby, their lifestyle. They moved to Tennessee and got to talk to them about depression, maintaining, you know, longevity as a creator, being an influencer that is a Christian on the internet and the effects that they get from that and just their marriage and any projects they are working on. So it was honestly a great conversation. Loved interviewing them. Hope you guys enjoy today's episode and let's just get right into it and and thank you guys for listening. All right, let's do it. Yay, Justin Gabe. Welcome to Happy and Healthy. How are you guys doing today? Great. Doing Excited to be here. Better now. <laughs> better now that we're all hanging out. Good. Are you guys feeling happy and healthy today on this lovely Thursday? Yeah. I am. I think so. Except yeah. I'm getting over a cold, so technically, you're like being technical. You're like 85% healthy. Yeah, no, yeah. No, I feel like you're 90 you just kind of have a little stuffiness in uh -huh. Yeah. 90% yeah. happy and healthy. You know, it's it's that season. I mean, we're I'm not exactly sure when this podcast is going to come out, but obviously it's fall right now. And I'm assuming it's pretty cold in Nashville where y'all are right now. I I no, you guys. Me, me, no, you go. I was just going to say, <laughs> I feel like Nashville can't decide. Like, it's hot, nice and hot today. And then I think in two days, it's like 40 Fahrenheit, which is like the high. cold. Yeah. Well, it's... It's been for the past like two weeks a high of like between seventy to seventy five, which is weird because before then it was like highs of like in the sixties. We were like, oh, it's getting colder. Then it like warmed up again, and then in a few days it's going from like seventy to the high of like forty two. So that'll be fun. Gosh, that honestly like sounds like Texas. Like I don't know if you guys have ever spent much time in Texas, but it is the most bipolar. It, like they tell you to pack for four seasons in one day because that's literally what it is. Like wow. it's freezing cold in the morning, 70 degrees, then it's super hot and then it's cold again at night. So I feel that. <laughs> Does it do the California thing where it's so dry? The temperature drops so quickly at night to like, you know, 40 degrees. And then all of a sudden it can be like 80 degrees at like the peak heat where like the range is so big. Okay. Yes. I feel like that's yes. a desert it thing. Gets, it gets the temperature... It varies, but Texas actually isn't dry at all. We're very, very humid here, which stinks. So if you Ugh. ever want to have nice hair, don't don't live in Texas. <laughs> really? It's so humid wait, wait, here. Which part of yeah. Texas are you from? I'm in Dallas. Yeah, I'm in the city. Mm -hmm. Is that further east? No, it's more like north. Yeah, no, northeast, northeast. It's like kind of at the tip of Texas, a little bit more. I remember when we drove, when we moved across, when we moved out of LA and we were driving across the country, 
driving through Texas was the craziest thing. Because, you know, you get out of L.A. and then it's desert. <laughs> then it was, you know, New Mexico and Arizona and those places where they all kind of look the same relatively, mm-hmm. all desert. And then as we were going through Texas, yeah. it went from like cowboy central, middle of nowhere, <laughs> desert, cactuses. Yeah. <laughs> and then by the, end, we, by the time we got to the other side, it was like south, green, rolling hills. It was pretty crazy. That sounds exactly about right. Uh, that sounds exactly right. I did the move also from back from LA back to Dallas as well. And I drove and I was just like, well, you know, you're back in Texas when you start seeing a little tumbleweed rolling across the yeah. road yeah, 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 yeah. and Texas is massive. So it just takes forever to get from one side to the next. And so you just feel like you're in this never ending state, which you are. I mean, it's a massive state. So, <laughs> but I love it. I do love it. Okay. So before we kind of just get more into the conversation of me asking a question, um, do you guys just mind introducing yourselves a little bit to maybe people that don't know who you are, which I would be very shocked if people didn't, but tell me like how you would sum up your relationship, which you guys do and just kind of your favorite, favorite hobbies. Um, I'm Jess. This is I'm Gabriel. My husband Gabriel. We've been married for almost six years. Next month will be six years. Um, yeah. I'm from Australia. He's American, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I moved to America when we got married. Favorite hobbies? Should we like? Should we really cliff note this this part? I was I was trying to like really cliff note it. I mean, really, the important details is that Jess DM'd me on Instagram while she was still living in Australia, and that's how we met. Oh, shoot your shot. She was just flirting with me in the DMs okay. and asking. Oh, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> she had a trip planned out a month later. So once she got to LA, when I was still living in LA, we started hanging out. And um, yeah, then we did long distance, got married. But um, favorite hobbies? Was that the next one? Yes. Favorite hobbies. I love, well, it's more an interest, but there's a hobby attached to it. The interest is Formula One. I'm a big Formula One, if you're familiar. Really? Like, mm. Yeah, race car driving. I'm familiar, but I'd never meet anyone that says that, to be honest. So that's a new one for me. Well, no, it is, it's becoming very popular in the U.S. Now mm-hmm. the biggest sports events in the U.S. are Formula One races. Like the one in Austin, Texas, uh, that was just a few weeks ago, was like, I think they had 420,000 people over the weekend. Wow. Which is like bigger than the Super Bowl and stuff like that. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. That's like more of an interest, but then the hobby part of it is now I go go-karting pretty often just because mm-hmm. I'm like trying to live the dream. So that's a hobby of mine. That's fun. My hobbies, I would say like music, singing, reading, paint by numbers, like nice crazy stuff in the house is me. Yeah. (laughs) And then Gabe's like (laughs) go-karting. I love it. Okay. That's so fun. So y'all are YouTubers. That's kind of how you guys started everything. You guys are really successful YouTubers, Um, musicians. You guys create music. You guys are Christians. Um, So I've listened to your worship songs as well. And you guys post on social media all the time. Gabriel, you are now an author, which congrats. That's so amazing. I want to ask you more about that as well later. Um, So you guys kind of do it all. And you guys are Christian influencers, which is really cool. Because I do feel like in the beginning when YouTube was popping up, there weren't very many Christian influencers. And I feel like you guys were kind of like the first ones. And you guys kind of paved the way, which was really, really cool. And so it's been kind of fun seeing your journey of that and everything. But how has that just been like being Christian influencers online? Like, do you guys get pushback? Is it something that you're just like, no, we don't care? Like, how is that being Christian influencers in today's day and age? Wow. Sorry, big question. (laughs) Thank you, by the way. That That was was all really nice. That was a great (laughs) intro. Yeah, I was like, I'm like, dang. (laughs) I think we're like a weird anomaly in the sense that we we're still pretty mainstream with our content, if that makes sense. Like we're not like a Christian YouTube channel, Mm -hmm. you know, we're not like sitting there all the time making videos of like 10 tips of how to find a Christian spouse or something something like that you know like like that's not our content our content is still like the normal vlogging lifestyle lifestyle stuff Mm -hmm. that you would see from anyone else but then um obviously our faith is the biggest part of who we are and that you know seeps through in our content whether we like mention it or someone asks us about it in like a q a or whatever it may be so that was pretty cool being able to not necessarily like preach and people find out about our faith but more so live it out and people find out that way and kind of and recognize it too you know some people in comments being like oh i i knew that they were christian like once i found out for the first time or something like that so yeah is there any challenges that you think that we face 
what was the quote in your book? What quote? I don't mean to bring out your book My already. Book? <laughs> My book? But what book? There's a Hey, the book is here. We will get to that book because I want to hear all about it. Yeah, there's a quote in my book that uh, I'm going to, you know, butcher the exact phrasing of it, but it's um, it's at all times preach the gospel and when necessary use words. Mm, wow. And I love that. And I think that's like what we try to do um, on our YouTube channel, like mm-hmm. just share God's love with just like how we act and like, I don't know, just mm-hmm. with like our story. But um, I I don't think there's been like a lot of pushback. I think openly being Christian, sometimes like people might hold you to a certain standard. I know like a couple years ago for me, it was like hard for me if we were on vacation, for example, to like post on the beach. Like, and I think just being openly Christian, some people have like different standards and like modesty is different for everyone. So I remember that was really difficult. Right. But um, in general, we have a lot of people from like a lot of different religions that follow us and I think they just like and relate to having faith in general Mm -hmm. and like really um appreciate that yeah which is an interesting one because we uh I don't know we just didn't anticipate to have so many different religions be following us as well um but I think maybe I'm I'm guessing like it's just probably the fact that like like religions in general are underrepresented in like the YouTube Mm. sphere social media world so I guess there's like a relatability there of having some sort of faith so it is it is pretty cool having like people from other religions still like respect us and and what we do and stuff like that no that's awesome and you know there is that one quote that says something like it's better to preach a sermon with your life than it is with your lips Mm. and it it sounds like that's what y'all are doing is just like living it out and being who you are and showing the abundance of walking with God and just the blessings that come with that. And I'm sure people are seeing that. And it's like no greater compliment than when someone was like, Oh, I just, I could just tell you were a Christian. Mm. Like that is like Such the a most compliment. rewarding yeah. compliment. And so props to y'all for just emulating that and living that out and doing that. No. So we met like back in LA, gosh, like, I don't know how many years ago, 2018, four or maybe? five years. What? Probably 2018. Yeah, a long, long, long time yeah, ago. Yeah, math. Four, Gosh. I think that's four or five. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think that was right Yeah, right when I moved out to LA. And yeah, at the time, I didn't know really many Christian YouTubers or anything. But I can't remember. So I feel like at that dinner, we shared our stories a little bit. But have you both always been walking with the Lord? Or was or, or did you guys grow up Christian? How was that? Um, I Yeah, I grew up Christian. My parents became... Uh, believers right when like right around when my older brother and I were born like really close so I go into all the details in my book sharing that story but my mom has HIV and she was given 10 years to live when she was my age and um, like we weren't supposed to be born and we were also me and my three other siblings were like supposed to have HIV because just like the whole process of birth was crazy with you know, so many bodily fluids and blood and all that sort of stuff. So that during that period of time, they were like surprise pregnancy. Then they were like, okay, with, this is with my older brother, who's just a year older than me. Then they were like, okay, let's just get married. Got married quickly. Then had my older brother. Then I was another surprise had me. And during that period of time was then they were, I guess, like coming to faith or discovering God, essentially. That like that period of time was them figuring out their faith in Christianity and what they believed and why and all that sort of stuff while me and my older brother were in our, you know, toddler years essentially. And then, so that's all, all I remember from that point is really growing up, um, in, in a Christian household. Yeah. And, um, for me, I also grew up, um, going to church all my life, going to Sunday school, youth group. I remember, I was like 10 or 11. I was sitting in my room with a Hillsong CD and in the like front booklet thing is right down the bottom. It had like, basically, if you want to give your life to God, like you can say this prayer. And I was like, oh my goodness, I, I haven't given my life to God. Like I haven't said this prayer before. And so I sat in my room and I said the prayer when, yeah, I was 10 or 11, but I feel like I took, like, I was just used to being a Christian and like used to the Bible and all of that. But I think I really took my faith, like not seriously, but I don't really know the right way to describe it, but it's a good way to say it. Like took your relationship with God more serious. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was kind of around the time that we met um, and I was out of high school and um, just like started reading the Bible 
really for myself, not because it was just like what I was used to doing um, and really just kind of like diving into what I believe and my faith. And then um, I say all this because then when we started dating, I got baptized, my cousin baptized me and then Gabe was also in the water with me. And so that was really special. I feel like that was a cool moment. Yeah. 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 That was awesome. Wow. That is so cool. Like you guys have been through a lot together, I'm assuming, because you've been together for six years or married for six years. And then how long did y'all date before you got married? Just a year. So it'll be seven, like come February, 2023, then it'll be seven years together. But yeah, next month is six years of marriage. It's been, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird to look back on because I still feel like I'm 21 or 22. I know. I just turned 28. Yeah. How old are you guys now? Oh my gosh. Okay. So am I. I'm 28 as well. So I'm 26. I got married when I was 20 and I'm like, I was a baby. Yeah. I look at people who are 20 and like my, even people who are 22 now. And I'm like, don't get married. Crazy. (laughs) 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 Okay. Let's talk about that for a second, because I feel like there's such a negative stigma around people that get married young. They're like, oh, you're going to be divorced, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm sure y'all heard so many people critiquing you, whatever, yada, yada. What would you say now? Like, would you still recommend it? Would you still tell people that are 20, like do it? Or what would your advice be? to just make sure that it's like the right thing before you jump into that. I think it's hard because like our situation was very unique. I knew the day that I met Gabe that I was going to marry him. I just, she told her mom the day that we met, I'm going to marry him. Um, If I knew that, I don't know if I would. (laughs) Hey, when you know, you know, that's what they say. (laughs) I know (laughs) seriously. And um, I think doing long distance and then we were both like, doing this as a job. So financially we were stable enough to get married. I think things lined up for us to get married when we did. Yeah. As far as like, it's very situational, I think, because there's, I'm for sure there's people who are our age now, you know, even people in their thirties who you'd be like, don't get married, you know, but then there's probably, mm-hmm. then there's going to be people who were our age at, in their, you know, early twenties who you would probably say like, yeah, I feel like you guys are, right. are ready to get married. Yeah, so every, just, yeah. it really is it depends and it's situational. Um, as far as like, would we suggest someone or couples get married at the age we did? <laughs> it, like, Your reactions are so good. Yeah, I, I mean. <laughs> it's so hard. We were, our situation was so unique in the sense that like financially we were able to do it. We both had jobs that allowed us to, do the long distance and for Jess to be able to move and still have a job and all that stuff. Yeah. It was just like our situation was unique in the sense that there was like the pieces that would normally be questioned in a situation that we had. We had like the answers were there, you know? Yeah. I don't think it's so much like a focus on the age, but more like is everything lining up for it to make sense to get married? And it just did make sense for us. Yeah. You know, like if, if there's a 30 year old guy who wants to marry a girl, but he's a hundred thousand dollars in debt and still living in his mom's basement, like that's a difference between a 20, I guess, like say a 21 or, or 22 year old person who maybe graduated college early or didn't even go to college and just started a career early and has savings and is ready for that next stage of life. Then it's like, okay, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So it really just depends on, on the situation, I think. But I will say, I love that we got married when we did because we got to experience so many years together and now almost six years married now we have our first baby and I just feel like I really loved that time Mm -hmm. that we got to have just us yeah I don't think it's a bad thing oh that's so cute no I don't think it's bad at all I think that you made such a good point like it really age doesn't mean crap like I've been saying that for a while I'm like I know 30 year old men that do not know what they're doing. They don't have anything figured out. I know guys that are younger and I'm like, how are you more mature than the 29 year old that I know? Wait, wait. So let me, so I really do feel like it is a maturity thing. So let me ask you this. Yes. Would you marry down? Marry down as far as age? Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Putting you on the spot. (laughs) Um, not opposed to it. I do think it can work. I actually know several people that have married men that are five years younger than them. Do I know if that's like the most recommended method? No, but I don't, I do think anything is possible. Yeah. Like anything is possible. It's exactly what you guys were saying of like, if the couple is ready, everything lines up, the man is mature, all that. Then I'm like, yes, more power to you. Yeah. 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 Cool. Nice. You guys are no parents. Congrats. Thanks. That's so amazing. 
You're now parents to a beautiful girl, Micaiah. She's you, you said she's two months old now? She is three months. Three now. three and change. Three and some change. Okay, what like what has that been like being parents now? What has that taught you so far? I want to hear everything. Oh my gosh. It is the best. Mm-hmm. It's like you know when people say it's like a love that you just can't describe. It's so true. Like Especially, this will sound silly, but we have a dog that I love so much. And before being pregnant and having a baby, I'm like, oh, I love him like my baby. But it's so different. It's amazing. It's definitely taught us. And it's something that we're still navigating is like, we have to be so intentional with our time with each other because our time right now is like 24 seven Micaiah. And so even like we'll be laying in bed and we'll face each other and we'll just like chat about our day or something. And I think that's really important because it's so easy to kind of push that to the side and maybe push the marriage to the side because you're like so focused on this baby, but she's the best. Um, She is, she is. Yeah. It's, it's, it is crazy. Like, especially over time, like at first, I remember when she was first born and I was trying to figure out like my feelings in the moment of like the baby sitting on uh, or laying on Jess's chest, meeting her for the first meeting time. Her for the first time, we didn't even know her name yet because we hadn't we hadn't officially picked one. I was I was trying to I had all these feelings and I was like, what? Am, why am I? Fe- I feel weird. What is this? I was feeling like I was meeting a stranger for the first time that I now need to grow a relationship with. Which like yeah, that's exactly what it is. But you you don't think you're just like oh I'm gonna have a daughter and she's gonna be part of the family. But then I realized like oh every family relationship that I've ever had was a pre-existing relationship, if that made sense. Like I never had to start from ground zero, even with Jess. Like, yeah, technically we started from ground zero, but by the time we were family, we were in love and knew each other really well and all that stuff. And then like all my, my siblings, my parents, grandparents, like they were all always there, you know? Um, so this was the first, I don't know. It was like pretty overwhelming that like first, those first moments of like, oh my gosh, this, I need to like grow a relationship with this person and get to know this person and, and all that stuff. And, but then over time, it's wild how the love actually just continues to grow. Uh, I feel, it seems like, like right at birth, it's like the seed is planted and then just, it just starts to grow and blossom. And it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's like a wild experience and other parents obviously like understand what I'm talking about, but yeah, highly recommend. Highly recommend. (laughs) Let me work on getting married yeah. first, but... <laughs> oh, I was just saying in general. I wasn't throwing that towards you. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, eventually I definitely want to be a mom, but that is so amazing. And it, that's exactly how I like every time I ask someone, they're like, it's just a love you cannot describe. And it's kind of like a picture of like how God loves us. It's like an indescribable love. And so, and it seems like that's now what you guys are getting to experience, which is so amazing. So congrats on just everything. I mean, you guys are honestly just crushing it. And I think one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys is what do you feel like has contributed to just like all the success and like what has kept y'all successful? Because we've been able to look at, you know, influencers getting canceled or dropping off or they disappear. They can't sustain it. They're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. What keeps y'all doing this and what has kept you successful? Hmm. Well, I'm glad that you think we're still relevant. I know. Thank you. <laughs> you are. It's, I mean, I'm like, y'all are crushing it. That's for so real. Oh, appreciate sweet. it. Yeah. There's so many times where I, I, especially with like YouTube now where it's like, so it's just gotten more and more difficult to like just sustain an audience, like sustaining an, a pre-existing audience is difficult enough. Like growing is a whole nother thing. And um, yeah, so it's like. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like we're, we have like lost traction and, and stuff like that. So it's, uh, I don't know, I guess I appreciate you saying, <laughs> saying that and asking that question, but I, what do you think? I would just quickly say that half of it would be Gabe and I are like, I don't want this to sound weird, but like we're very creative people and we like to do good at our job. So we'll like be researching as much as we can, like about what's happening in terms of like editing and trends or you know that sort of thing Mm -hmm. but I think the other half is that since we started um even like Gabe had an audience before we started dating but they have I started on Vine if you remember did you not know that yeah yeah yeah. he's a Viner I started on Vine in 2013 oh my god so I've been next July will be 10 years for me in the game wow yeah 
I was, yeah. Dang, no, I've hit my 10 year mark a while ago and I was like, I'm that old. Congrats. Like, We're that old now. I'm like, oh my yeah, gosh. Okay, it's sorry, rough. go ahead. Jess. No, I was just going to say, um, <laughs> then when we started dating, um, people just loved like following our long distance and then getting married. And they've kind of just been so loyal and amazing and like stuck through every season of life with us. Mm -hmm. And now six years later having a baby, um, I would say like a lot is just like, we have this incredible loyal audience. Mm -hmm. Um, Like a lot of the people that still watch us today are like, I remember when you started dating and it's just, it's so sweet. Yeah. And it's cool how so much of our audience is at similar stages of life as us. Yeah. We got married and then there was, you know, after we got married, there was a lot of like people in our audience who, who got married it's funny, we get a lot of like wedding invitations to our P.O. box, oh. and, which is really, really sweet. I've actually gotten those. People invite me to their graduations, yeah. their yeah, weddings. Yeah. I'm like, you like me that much? I'm like, what? It's it's an honor. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like- it's it's so cool. But it's it's cool seeing that kind of like happen in like a similar timeline, I guess you could say, as like our life and our story. And even even like people having kids now. For my book, I did the, a book event here in Nashville. And, um, where I, you know, at a little, I talked, answered some questions, signed books and met, met a bunch of people. And, you know, there's people there who were pregnant. A couple came with their baby, just like, you know, people they, in they the same stage of us. life. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. That's the best part about it is like you bring them along the journey with you. And what's kind of scary is sometimes they feel like they know you so much and you're like, wait, no, you actually don't know me that much, but it's cool. Cause you, you bring them along and they feel like they're your best friend. And I think that is just like my favorite part about this in conjunction with that when people are like i feel like you're my best friend people might look at y'all and be like wow you guys have it all together you're successful authors you're you have you're married you have a baby now like what would you say to the people that are just you know maybe envious of your lifestyle and they're like man i want to be you guys like what's the reality what are things that you do deal with behind the scenes that maybe just can be like yo it's not all that's cracked up to be i think it's so important like well, first of all, you're asking some fire questions. Here. I know. I'm so, yeah. I'm just like trying to drop some bombs over here. <laughs> we all hear it, but it's so important to remember. For the most part, people just share their highlights. So it, it's Oh, that's my favorite sound. Not sponsored. Polypop. <laughs> um, if you need to cut that out, because you have a different No, I, I actually love that sound. So we're going to leave it in the <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Um, yeah, I think like... I can relate to that. Like, it's just easy to see people online and only see like what they're, that they have filtered and what they're choosing to post. 99% of it is like amazing, happy. And so I understand where that like can come from. Mm -hmm. Um, But we've been pretty open, like Gabe especially is super open about mental health. And that's like something that we have both struggled with. And Gabe um, has like struggled with depression a couple of times. Social media is weird because you're not just going to show all the bad moments you know you're not like you're not showing your whole life and and you wouldn't do that anyway you're going to show like if something good happens that's what you want to share with people Mm -hmm. but then on the receiving end of it from like a viewer side um it's it just seems it's a highlight reel you know and not that that's a bad thing it's just like the natural way that it's going to happen and that's naturally what people are going to post is is the good stuff besides like what like just mentioned like the odd moment that we share what's actually going on in the background where maybe we talk about it in a video or open up on Instagram or whatever it may be given that like the grass is always greener even Mm -hmm. like from peer to peer you know what I mean like even if you're just comparing yourself to one of your friends social media posts or like someone who's in the same stage of life same I I guess fall I'm outside of the influencer world just like peer to peer the grass is always greener and it's something to I don't know you just kind of have to constantly have the check to remember like the mental check Mm -hmm. to remember that they're going through problems everyone's going through problems life is good sometimes life is bad sometimes and um I think it's like you post your highlights well so are they like just remember that yeah 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 exactly exactly so that's good more into that obviously I know that COVID was pretty difficult for y'all and you weren't able to go back to Australia and I, I did see some of those videos and um that was obviously like a traumatic time for all of us. It's like, I don't really want to bring that back up, but mm-hmm. yeah, y'all have been through some difficult times and you have shared it. And I think that's what makes people like y'all is because it is real and you do share the things that are tough as well. And I think especially with the conversation of mental health coming up more and the realities of that, um, I guess, Gabe, could you just share more of that of like 
what was that like for you? Do you still struggle with that? Like, what are just some, some tips or thoughts for people that are listening to this podcast right now? And they're like, well, that's me. Like I'm going through that. My bouts with depression have been really correlated to burnout and like overworking myself. I guess to recap, I end of 2018, beginning of 2019 was like my first wave of it. Didn't know what was happening. Didn't know what was going on. It was the first time like feeling this way. And, um, I had basically added too much on my plate work wise and I was not feeling fulfilled. And I really started correlating it mostly to a fulfillment level. Cause I was like trying to find purpose and find meaning in my life. Then I started kind of, I took basically the beginning of 2019 off. I wasn't really working other than we vlogged a bit and posted every now and then. But other than that, I wasn't doing any extra projects in the background or anything like that. And um, that led to, I, I went through depression again. I forget exactly what the time period was, but it was like similar circumstances of kind of overworking myself. But at that time, during those, that, those two like first rounds of depression, I... Like I said, I was correlating my depression with like doing, working on too many things that weren't fulfilling. So I started adding things onto my plate that were really like meaningful and purposeful and, and got me really excited. And then I was really like, that were really fun and I was excited to do. And, um, but even then come to the end of 2021, I have a lot on my plate working on a lot of different stuff. We find out we're pregnant. I remember thinking to myself, if I continue operating the same way I'm operating now, I'm going to be a terrible dad. So I had to really kind of like look at everything and figure out like, yeah, may, all these things are really good, but what's best? Like, what do I actually need to be focusing on? And that's like the, the, the I guess, dichotomy of being an influencer is having endless opportunities because you can kind of, you have this built in audience, you can kind of start whatever and you have just a bunch of opportunities to be successful. Rel relatively easy compared to someone, you know, trying to start a podcast without a following or trying to launch a brand without a following or whatever it may be. So I really needed to, you know, put some like blinders on and understand that like, I don't need to take every opportunity or every idea that I have and I really need to like focus on like the, the important thing um, and the important, like the work that I was like made to be doing, not just work that I can do because it's also good. So anyway, looping that all back around, when I was struggling with depression, a lot of the, a lot of what I like learned in those periods of time, especially with like my faith and stuff and really trying to rely on God in those moments was I really had to rely on God so much. Like the, the, th thread that like carried me through and like if it was a graph whenever like I was really able to get an uptick in my emotional healing was times where I was really reliant on God or like something that God showed me whether it was through a sermon I listened to while on a drive or you know a moment that I had at church or just like spending time with God in the morning and then I really learned to cope because my depression was really coupled with anxiety and I had anxiety anxiety a lot of the time and I really, I, w I was able to build a habit of whenever I experience anxiety, I would immediately have a voice crack. I would immediately go to prayer and like pray myself through it, you know? And that was one thing that was really, really uh, key for me is to kind of like build that habit of like, I'm experiencing anxiety, pause, stop whatever I'm doing. And just like, just like trying to like pray myself through that moment. And um, yeah, that was that was pretty key for me. And, and, the, but that was, you know, that's over years. Like my first bout with depression was 2018 and that and like therapy and learning about like how I'm wired and why I, you know, operate the way I do or, or whatever it may be. It's, it's a lot, but the main thing that I would say for anyone like struggling with it, it is that it is very, very hard work. In general, it is hard work outside the fact that you're depressed and you don't want to do anything and doing like that makes it a hundred times harder, but it is very, very hard work, but it's very necessary work that you have to put in to heal. And it takes very intentional like habit building and choices that you need to make in order to, to kind of like get through those really low seasons in life. Mm. Wow. Thank you for sharing. 
yeah, I think that no worries. That's my twenty minute long explanation there. No, <laughs> it's great because I mean you are sharing the realities of like because just because you are a Christian doesn't mean you're you're immune to anxiety or feeling depressed. Um yeah. but it it's cool to see how you coupled that still with like prayer and still therapy and still talking through it. And I'm sure Jess helped you a ton through that as well, which I would love to hear Jess your answer and just like how you were able to be there for him during that. But it's just cool to to show that like we are real, we're human beings. We do face these and we we need God so much. But we also do need to understand how we're wired, why we are acting out the way we are. Um, but yeah, Jess, do you mind just sharing like a little bit of like, how was that for you in that process? And like, how do you feel like you were able to kind of help him along in that? It's really difficult, like seeing the person you love go through that. And I think like from the outside as someone who I haven't dealt with depression, um, so I don't fully understand it. I think it's easy for me to look on the outside and be like getting out of bed and having a good breakfast and going on a walk and like getting some fresh air, like those things would be good for you. But there's only so much I can say. It's like, it really has to come from him. And so I definitely tried to encourage things like that. But um, I did learn that like, ultimately that's going to come from him deciding to get outside and exercise and stuff like that. One of the best, like Jess was a rock star during all those seasons. And the best thing like you handled it so well in the sense that you weren't sitting there like necessarily like telling me how to get better or telling me that I'm my thinking is skewed or whatever it may be. You were you basically just encouraged me to do things that you knew would help heal me. Like you just encur- you would encourage me to go to the gym. You would encourage me to go on a walk or make sure I was eating and you know all those things. There's definitely like a way to as someone who's like a partner or friend or whoever it may be of someone dealing with it, the encouragement of doing the things that you know can help the person is Mm -hmm. way more beneficial than like, like the telling them Mm -hmm. like, this is going to make you feel better that, you know, you know that, you know, like that sort of thing. And you did that so well. So thank you. Thanks. I'm glad you said that because I would never want it to come across like get out of bed, you know, anything Mm -hmm. forceful like that, but instead kind of just being a bit, um, more gentle with it and being even like, do you want to go on a walk with me? Like, I'm going to go on a walk. Do you want to come? That sort of thing. Like, yes, but it's definitely difficult to see the person you love go through that. And we both go to therapy and we were both going to therapy at the time. And so I would just ask my therapist. I like just wanted to know more about depression and like what, what can happen. And that also like helped me a lot to understand Mm -hmm. because it's really hard. Like if you don't go through it, to fully understand um, what they're going through. Wow. That's so great that you even like took the time to kind of educate yourself too, to get a better understanding instead of just being like, are you kidding me? Like why get out of bed, like making him feel less than and said you took the time to understand what's going on as well. And I just think that's like so respectable. So way to go dream team. Okay. I'm going to start trying to close out, uh, but I'm sorry for leaving your book as the last thing I wanted to bring this up earlier, but you have a new book. You can now, you can lift it up now. We Let's see it. It's called A Mission Yay. for Meaning. Congrats. A Mission for Meaning. Yep. Yay. Tell us about it. When did you, you just launched it this past week or two weeks ago. Is that right? Uh, was it two, three, a, weeks, weeks, yeah. a few weeks ago. I'm losing track of time here. Once, you know, since becoming parents, stuff <laughs> is getting so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about your book and like why you wrote it and what, what is it about? Yeah. So I, um, <sighs> I was really opposed to writing a book for a while. My manager kept saying like, you need to write a book. He was basically like, you will write a good book. I know you'll put your heart in it and you'll do a great job. And for years he told me that. And um, I just wasn't, he was like a huge cheerleader for me basically. And I just, I was like, I am not qualified to write a book, Kyle. I, like, what am I going to say? Like, you know, I was just like, there was so much doubt that I had in myself with like, writing a book, you know, I was like, I make silly YouTube videos online. (laughs) Um, but yeah, over time it was once I was 25. And at that time, because I was 25 when I started writing the book, which is wild. I just turned 28. And, um, I finally was like, I think, I think I have enough that I want to say. And I think a book is the right way to say it. So fast forward 
go through the whole process of writing the book, um, which is a pretty crazy like endeavor. Just just the uh, the whole journey of doing that. Especially there was moments where I was like struggling with depression, and then I had deadlines for the book, and I need to be like writing stuff that's like encouraging and like giving advice essentially or whatever it may be. And I was just like feeling so crap. Um, so th- there was, there was a one month specifically where I got a like revised version of the book back. So there was like three, there's basically like a triangle of edits that happened. There was me, my co-writer and then the publisher. And it would, it continually like pinged back and forth with edits as like the new drafts kept happening and everything and go, you know, to, to my co-writer, then back to me, then I'd send it off to back to him. Then he would, you know, touch up all my typos and it'd go back to <laughs> the editor and then they touch up all his typos and add new things. And during that process, I got back a version and they're like, okay, you have to go through this whole thing. We need it in a month. It was during that period of time that I mentioned, um, it was like end of 2021, beginning of 2022. I forget exactly where in there that month was, but it was during that period of time where I was really struggling with depression. I was like learning so much about myself in that, especially be expecting my first child. And there was so much that I then wanted to put into these pages. So it was, it was such a mental battle of like, I am, I don't feel like doing any of this. I don't even feel like opening the word document right now, but I know there's so much that I need to share what I'm going through and what I'm learning. And that month was like the hardest thing was starting every day. Cause I knew I was like, okay, I broke it down and I was like, okay, if I need to get through this in a month, it's going to take, and there's this many pages that I need to get through. That means I need to do like, I forgot what the number was, but it was something like six or seven pages a day. And I was like, I just need to get, hit that number. If I hit that number every day, I'm on track. And I want, it doesn't like lead me to have, having to do like 50 pages, you know, every day for a week or something like that. So every day, the hardest thing was just starting. But once I started writing each page, then it was, I was like getting therapy for myself. It was like myself who was writing these words, you know, even a year before was like sticking his hand out of, out of the screen and slapping me in the face being like, Hey, get it together. You know? Mm -hmm. So that was like a really weird. And then I was then adding more to it. It was that month specifically was like a really weird, crazy month of, of writing the book. But anyway, that was the process of writing the book, the book itself. It's called a mission for meaning. Cause as you, through the whole, um, I guess through this whole interview, you've kind of like understood a lot of what I've gone through and my like search for like purpose and meaning and with what I do and, and you know, what I spend my time on and what I dedicate my life to. So, um, that's kind of where the title derived from, but, uh, the subtitle is the choices that lead to the life you really want. And throughout the book, like the bigger scope of the book is really understanding like the mission you're on in life and how that like brings meaning and purpose and fulfillment into your life. But then I, try and break that down into the small oh what's that milo hello <laughs> <laughs> favorite part of the interview is the dog yeah, there, we go. there we go um but then i really try and break that down like what are the practical habits and choices that you make every day and how can you be really intentional about those because those are actually what's going to change your life and like the whole scope of it and those are the things that will end up getting you towards this greater mission that you have. And um, I talk a little bit about uh, like the choices that you make every day is yeah. Compound invest. What, what, wow. Interest. It's like, and there we go. Oh my gosh. It's like investing in the stock market. Compound. Interest. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. You, you should have written the Take book. Take it away. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and your choices, the choices that you make every day are like that. You're, you're investing into your future and it's not just like that choice doesn't just affect the moment here and now it does have a ripple effect through time with the habits that you continue to build and, and how those choices that you make affect different people and how those people will then affect other people through, through these intentional choices that you're making. So anyway, long story short throughout the book, I really use my story, my own story as like the vehicle to share the message of the book. And I, I, yes, it is my story, but I didn't want that. I didn't want it to stop at just my story. The goal of it was to use my story to try and impact other people's stories. I do mention in here that everyone has their own story and the circumstances might be greater or more dramatic than my story or maybe even less dramatic than my story, but that's irrelevant. Everyone has their own story, whatever it may be. And your story, the things that you've gone through, the experiences that you've gone through, your failures, everything you've learned are 
able to be used to help impact other people. You know, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here because I was, like I mentioned at the beginning, I was, I was like, what do I have to share? Like my life has been pretty good. Yeah. Like my parents went through some stuff, but like I had a breakup and you know, my ex-girlfriend cheated on me and stuff like that. But it's like, okay, yeah, that happens to a bunch of people. Like, what do I have to share? And I had to sit there and really realize like, no, okay. That's like a negative voice in my head. My story is important. And, and, and so is everyone else's story. And you can use your story to impact other people. So anyway, that's another like 20 minute explanation of, of <laughs> classic game. what I was uh, trying to say, but yeah, a mission for meaning. I feel like that explained it all <laughs> relatively. No, I'm so honestly well. like you have me sold. I'm like, I want to read it now. And I, I think that's an incredible message. Do like it, truly. Do and it, do it. I mean, Hey, if you want to send me one, <laughs> and I will, I will. I have so many books. The publisher sent me so many books. I, I, I should have added you to the PR list too. I don't know. I was trying to think with they're like, we need the PR list this week. And I was like, Oh crap. Who do I send this to? I like well, missed friends. Not too late. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think my sister, I forgot to add her to it. I'm like, oh my, yeah, there's like, anyway, I'll send you a copy. No worries. Well, yeah, congrats. That's so exciting. And I know the process of writing a book is, it's long. I'm actually in the same yeah. process right now. So I feel you. Um, wow. very nice. Congrats. Let's go. Yeah. But I'll add you guys to my PR list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, before we close out, um, Jess, do you have any projects you want to share? Yes. I will just be very quick, but um, probably yeah, by the time this is out, I have, oh, sure. I have a guided journal. Um, <gasps> oh my it gosh, is. Congrats. Thank cool. you. It's, it's beautiful. Thank you. Get get a copy. <laughs> no, you're on my PL list. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. No, but it is so, when Jess showed me, sorry, I'm hijacking this, but when Jess showed this to me for the first time, I was actually shocked at just how, how nice this is. Like it's it even beautiful. has beautiful. It's got a little Bible tag in it. <gasps> oh, I so you love can keep it. it. Like, it's so nice. A Bible tag. Yeah. It's very oh beautiful. Gosh, um, basically, the... Oh, hello. We're all, our voices are all <laughs> cracking over here. Yeah. The intention behind this is just to have some me time, like to have some time off, off your phone, um, kind of like away from everything that's happening. Um, yeah, it's just got some really... It's got a good mix of some lighthearted stuff, like some little prompts and activities and quote pages that are really cute. But then it also has some more like thought provoking questions and letters to write to yourself and stuff like that. So I think it's got a good mix of everything. And it's just something that like I would want to to pick off the shelf. And so it, it, it's been really fun. Um, yeah. So that's day by day. I got a journal. I this love is like it. my first time talking about Congrats. it. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats Thank to both you. of you. That's so exciting. You guys are a power couple, changing people's lives, changing people's lives for the kingdom. And uh, yeah, feel free to send me both the books whenever they're out. I'm happy to to read them and do the guided journal. And so Thank you guys for coming on. Like, I love hearing your story. You guys are incredible. I just pray nothing but success and blessings over y'all and your new baby. And just excited to see where else like God takes y'all, what other kids might come down the road. <laughs> um, and if I'm ever out in Nashville, which I actually think I'm coming out there soon, you know. Oh, I really? Hit us up. Yeah, yeah. I definitely will. I just want to say thank you for having us. Um, mm -hmm. I love your podcast. So you're also doing incredible things. So yeah. It's like an honor for Thank us you. to be on. Yeah. Keep crushing it. Yeah. Keep Thank telling you the guys. Game. I appreciate it so much. Well, this podcast, I know it's going to be a blessing for some people. Um, and I guess just to close out, can you just let everyone know where they can find y'all if they don't know who you are, where they can follow you and all the things? Well, Jess is super cool and has at Jess on Instagram. Yeah, and she Gabe does. Gabriel <laughs> Conti, but you can just find us on YouTube. Jess and Gabriel yeah. is our channel. Yeah. Just our names, really. It. If you type in Jess Conti or Gabriel Conti, yeah. you should be able to find find us on on the all the things social media sphere. I love it. Well, great. Okay, you guys, all the links will be in the show notes or down below in the YouTube um, description. Thank you guys again so much for just your time. Um, I know this is going to bless people. And until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye.
Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I know it was a little bit of a longer one, but that's just because the conversation was too dang good. And if you guys are seeing like differences in background still uh, for the first few episodes, that's just because in the first couple episodes, I was still figuring out the background. So that's why it's still in my old office and stuff. So from now on, or actually in another like episode after the episode with Ivan Hall, we will be going back to this regular background. So I just had to figure that all out and just put that out there thank you guys for listening to today's episode if you did enjoy it give us a review or post it on instagram give us a tag we will reshare you guys we always try to reshare them and i hope you guys did enjoy today's conversation so yeah i will see you guys next tuesday for another episode of having healthy i am so happy to be back we will be back again next tuesday so love you guys thank you for tuning in and i'll see you guys then until then stay happy and healthy bye y'all <laughs>